Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively new paper that might have identified a Tunguska-like explosion, Tunguska-like event, where a somewhat small rock created an extremely explosive event, potentially destroying an entire city in the Bronze Age in one of the regions in the Middle East, very close to the Dead Sea, a region located in modern-day Jordan. And what's really interesting about this particular discovery is that it might actually connect to one of the biblical stories. The mythical destruction of the city known as Sodom, or Sodom and Gomorrah as it's also known, although that part is still being debated. So let's actually discuss what the scientists discovered and what it kind of means to us in terms of our understanding of the frequency of these events. First of all, this ancient city existed for several thousand years, approximately 3600 years ago, in roughly around 6050 BC, the city was at its peak, and back then it was also one of the biggest cities in the world. It was at least 10 times bigger than Jerusalem, and at least 5 times bigger than Jericho. And because of its central location, extremely close to various bodies of water, it became an extremely important cultural center for various cultures living in this region. Today it's believed that this particular city served an important role in helping us advance various types of tool making, various types of pottery, and a lot of other major advances for many different cultures in this region, making Tal el Halam one of the central metropolises that used to exist during the Bronze Age um, in the Middle East. And the evidence from various sediments located in the region also imply that humans lived in this particular city for thousands and thousands of years, going all the way back to the Copper Age, all the way back to 5000 BC. And because the sediment in this region also shows the signs of the city being destroyed and rebuilt at least several times, it implies that this was an extremely important area for a lot of different cultures simply based on the various attempts to conquer the city. But while looking through various sediments and various deposits in this region, the scientists or the archaeologists identified something somewhat strange in the one and a half meter interval that represented the Middle Bronze Age the period that would be approximately three and a half thousand years ago. This particular part of the sediment contained a lot of unusual materials and a lot of unusual inclusions that are normally not actually very common or almost never seen at all. A lot of the samples and a lot of pieces they found resembled something you would expect after a typical warfare. A lot of destroyed pieces, a lot of parts of broken walls and broken buildings, something that would generally indicate either major warfare or potentially a major earthquake. But for some reason there was something else. For example, pieces of pottery that were burned under extremely high temperatures. Or shards from various buildings, such as a palace, that were partially melted and most likely experienced extremely high temperatures as well. And a lot of other pieces that either melted into glass or turned into some sort of a bubbled material that can only be done by temperatures over 2000 degrees Celsius. Something that back then the humans simply could not produce themselves. There is almost no way that someone found a way to create such high temperatures during this particular archaeological era. And so once the scientists behind this paper started to investigate these samples in more detail, essentially using a lot of microscopes to try to see what else they can find, they started to discover a lot of other really important parts. They discovered what's known as shocked quartz, and a lot of iron and silica rich spherules, which normally only form in really high pressures and really high temperatures. And interestingly, even sand, or the actual grains of sand, seem to contain tiny cracks on the inside, also indicating extremely high pressures and potentially high temperatures. And all of the signs pointed at the culprit you see right here. Some sort of a bolide, potentially somewhat similar in size to the famous Tunguska meteor that exploded in Siberia back in 1908. And if you'd like to learn more about that event, check out one of the previous videos. And so all of the evidence collected so far definitely points at some sort of a cosmic explosion, or basically an explosion of a meteor. And similar to Tunguska, it was probably only about 50 to maybe 80 meters in size, and very likely entered the atmosphere extremely fast and exploded before anything could even reach the ground. Which means that it would not really produce any crater, and would unlikely leave any other signs behind except for the signs of devastation and the signs of an extremely powerful aerial explosion, potentially similar to what the scientists found in Tunguska. And the estimated total yield of the explosion is probably in the region of about 10 to maybe 12 megaton, or approximately 1000 times more powerful than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. 
And in terms of the strength of the airburst, here is a rough representation created by the scientists. So this would cover an extremely large region, potentially reaching several cities, but being particularly devastating to Tal El Hammam. With the computer simulations of the airburst, suggesting that the entry angle was about 35 degrees, the detonation occurred at an altitude of about 18 kilometers, with the burst itself creating a lot of ionized gases moving extremely fast and having a temperature anywhere from about 500 to about 1500 Kelvin. And this type of an explosion would be more than enough to completely destroy an ancient city, but on top of that, potentially also create a lot of legends and a lot of stories in regards to this event. And the reason for this is simple, these events are not very common, and so a culture in the Middle East might witness this maybe every few hundred years. And so when it happens, it's quite likely that many different cultures will try to interpret this either as some sort of a punishment from the gods, or potentially even as some sort of an end of the world. And because of this, it sort of makes sense to assume that this is maybe how the legend of Sodom began as well. We know from biblical stories that Sodom was destroyed when pillars of fire and brimstone fell from the skies, destroying several cities and killing both inhabitants and their crops. And so the connection seems to be there. It does seem to be almost like a witness account of a typical air bolide. But even though it's possible that this is indeed how the legend of Sodom started, the actual evidence is unfortunately circumstantial and according to some scientists, some of the timelines don't seem to match. But it does make some sense. I mean, when you think about it, if it was a really complex city, one of the biggest cities in the region, you would expect some of the city inhabitants to become wicked, as they're called in the Bible. And so the ancients could have seen this wickedness as the reason for the destruction of the city. But that's sort of how human mind works. We tend to attribute meaning to various random events. In reality though, we might not actually know if this was Sodom for at least a few decades until further investigations. But what is clear is that something dramatic definitely happened to this particular region approximately 3600 years ago. There's actually quite a lot of other things they discovered in the study, and a lot of them are really difficult to explain without evoking some sort of a dramatic explosion or extremely powerful event. For example, a lot of the samples from the region seem to contain extremely high levels of solidity or essentially salt, with some samples containing 25% of salt by weight. And one of the potential explanations here involves the Dead Sea, which is, as you know, extremely salty. If this region was hit by some sort of a major explosion, a lot of the salt would be distributed across the area, spreading all of these salt crystals across really, really large regions. And what's somewhat interesting is that something like this is mentioned in the Bible. The salt in this case was mentioned as the reason why nothing could grow in the soil anymore, and salt would in theory have a major effect on the fertility of the soil. Naturally, if nothing could grow on the soil anymore, people would leave and abandon the cities, and this is sort of what is seen in some of these sediments as well. Following this period approximately 3600 years ago, the city is essentially abandoned for approximately 600 years, and it's only resettled hundreds and hundreds of years later. Now, it wasn't entirely abandoned, uh, there were still some people living in the region, but it went from thousands of people to possibly just a few hundred. And so this salt theory is actually kind of intriguing, especially because the signs of the salinity in this case do sort of resemble something that could be produced by some sort of an explosion. And so that's one of the potential explanations for why so many samples contain so much salt. But if you do explore the paper, you'll find a lot of other evidence as well. For example, they've also found signs of human remains, that seem to be fragmented and disarticulated by something extremely explosive, as well as obvious signs of huge buildings completely stripped apart and completely destroyed by, once again, something explosive. And so this by itself is a somewhat intriguing and extremely interesting discovery. A discovery that could potentially explain one of the major stories in the Bible, and a discovery that could potentially help us understand how frequent these bolides happen, and how likely are we to see one in the next few decades. But there's actually at least one more video on the channel that talks about yet another event that happened a few thousand years ago that seems to have destroyed another city that was also in the Middle East. You can check out this video somewhere right there. And so what all of this suggests is that the bolides, or the air bolide explosions, are possibly a lot more frequent than we imagine them to be. There's at least one more case I haven't talked about yet, the one that happened in China a few hundred years ago, that is also described as one of the most destructive air bolides in history. 
And because generally these rocks are actually not that large and are somewhat difficult to detect until they're extremely close to planet Earth, this could potentially be one of the most unpredictable and most destructive events that could one day strike planet Earth in the next few decades without us ever knowing it's going to happen. But we'll actually talk a lot more about this in some of the future videos. Anyway, on that note, check out some of the links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful personal t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.